Hi everyone, this video is a replacement for SpryPlay 3 regarding flagging records for dependency performance. So the previous video uh, was a little rushed, uh, I was just getting out the door, so I'm redoing it to explain the concepts a little bit uh, a little bit better. So in this particular example, what I want to do firstly is I just want to uh, explain, we've got a couple of really common styles of dependencies here, uh, which is uh, which are both a group of tasks wait on another group of tasks, right? So the first one here, which you have, is, if you're not familiar with the demo model, this one says don't dig F seam until D seam and the next strip is all done. So F seam is this series of dirt down here and D seam is this series of dirt up here. We could probably go with a color set, we color by seam, and that way it's a little easier to see. So dark and then the light green is the F seam. So don't start, and you'll see the impact of it, skip forward a little bit in time, don't start the F seam until the D seam and the next strip has been completed. So. <clears throat> So this dependency here, and we've also got another dependency, which is not uh, as easy to demonstrate, but it's a quite simple one, which is just that strip four can't start until strip one has been finished. Some version of that, where a large group of tasks wait on another, wait on another large group of tasks. Um, the purpose of these flags that we're going to discuss is where uh, most of these relationships that get generated, so I'll rerun the schedule to show you in the output window how many dependencies are actually getting generated. So you can see that don't start, uh, don't dig F seam until D seam is done, it generates 450,000 dependencies and don't start strip until three strips ahead is 1.8 million. Uh, if you want to see those numbers and understand how much impact they have on your schedule, there is a background setting in your all settings called debug scheduling show apply dependency time, rule time. So if you set that to true and hit save, uh, you'll be able to see this information in your output window each time you run the schedule. Uh, and so the impact of the flags is going to be that the performance, sorry, the uh, performance is improved significantly, but that the number, like the, the impact of the dependencies is identical. So with these flags that I've created, uh, the number of dependencies is reduced from hundreds of thousands uh, to about a thousand. So, uh, and the performance of these and the, and the behavior of these is identical. So the reason why we use these flags is really what you're trying to do is say that don't start uh, F seam until the bottom record, the bottom series of records. So there's a series of records at the bottom of D seam, which once they are completed, it's the same as saying all of the records are completed because the rest of these records up the top section here are all being impacted by the dig top down dependency. So you're not really needing to say, wait for this to be finished because there's no way for these records down here to have been finished until these ones above it have been finished. So you can effectively ignore all of the main records in the dig top down, or well, to be more clear in this side, you can ignore them because there's no, you're not gonna finish seam F until you've finished, uh, sorry, yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna uh, finish seam D until you've hit the bottom records in seam D. And vice versa, you don't need to say that the bottom records in seam F are waiting on seam D. You can just say the top records because the dig top down is handling the remainder of the uh, of the relationship, relationships here. So uh, what the ranges actually end up doing or the flags end up doing, so if we look at say top bench in block, you can see the top records themselves are only present. Bottom bench in block, it's all pretty much coal, although there are a handful of records where there's no coal. Bottom bench in seam, which gives us each seam gets its own bottom, and the same with the top. Top bench in seam gives us a series of records, which are just the top in each seam. So how we actually get these flags on here uh, is the main part of this. So we're using calculated fields in this example, and the calculated fields, I'm just going to drag and drop a few of pieces of information under this. They're all calculated fields that for me sit in a, a flags folder at the bottom. And so before we discuss exactly what's happening with the uh, the formulas themselves, I just want to show you the deposit table and talk about uh, children, siblings, parents, and things like that, which is what the language that gets used in the actual expression. So this one, this expression here says get previous sibling. 
the previous and next sibling functions are just older and younger siblings. So previous sibling means older, as in if this is your family tree and you're the, the second, second eldest, the previous sibling is the older sibling. So this is the oldest sibling in this particular scene. And so you can see in the table, it has been ticked on. And that is because the, the second part of this uh, flag, let's get that hover to work, is the check for whether it's null or not. So null is the same way of saying, do I, it, d does this thing exist? Uh, and so is there a an older brother or sister to this record? And the answer is no. At, at, for this parent, which is what the DCM is in this particular block, the DCM is the parent. To this parent, there is no older or previous sibling. So the check for null is true, as in there is no such thing. So the tick comes on. And the opposite exists for the coal record, the coal bench down the bottom here. It's gotten a tick because it is the, there is no next sibling. So you see there it says is null, get next sibling. So that's the check uh, for within the same uh, parent. So you're, this is parents, grandparents, etc., etc. So the next check is, is this the top seam in the block? So this adds one additional layer to this problem, uh, which is that instead of just checking your current previous sibling, you're actually asking your parent if your parent has a previous sibling. So we sort of collapse the, the, the comparison. We say, does the DCM have a, uh, an older sibling? And the answer in this particular example is no, D is the eldest. So every record in D has been flagged with the fact that it's part of the top seam in the block. Same with the bottom seam. So you can see here, is null and the one thing to note about the way these functions work is they they kind of logically work um, you have to you have to think about them in sequence and they work from the in from the inside out so if you want to understand how this formula gets read you kind of have to say okay f the f the most innermost function here is get parent seam so go up to the seam parent so go up to the parent at this level go up to the parent at that level and the next part of the function is get previous siblings. So within outside of that is get previous sibling and then outside of all of those checks is does this record exist. Same with get next sibling, same thing, flags the F seam as the lowest seam. And then the other thing you can do and the other thing that's used in this model for the strip to strip dependency is once you've got that you can combine those two records together. So if you want to know uh, what the top bench in the block is, then you can just check both of those flags. And if both of those flags are true, then you've hit, uh, and you've hit a true. So this D145 meets these two conditions and therefore returns true. But if we look at the top bench in the E, it does meet top bench in seam, but it doesn't meet uh, top seam in block. So it doesn't therefore also meet top bench in block. But if you want to use top in seam, it does get used. So if we go down to F, you can see that all the records are flagged with bottom seam in block, but only the bottom bench in seam, only the coal record in this seam has been flagged as both. So <coughs> there, are, there are several more complicated ways to move up and down and around the table. Uh, if you require something that doesn't work quite this neatly in the structure, so the structure for this model is pit strip block seam bench, if it goes pit strip block and then seam and bench uh, are swapped around or there's additional levels down here, this still can work. Uh, where it gets trickier is if your vertical, if you wanted to say top record and block, if your block were to sit underneath your seam or your bench, you do have to uh, potentially go about it a little bit of a different way. But this is the most common type of structure for say an open cut coal mine. So uh, if your dependencies are taking a while to run and you'll know that by setting your dependency runtime or if you're um, if you're following in your, uh, in your log how long the schedule actually takes to run, uh, this can be a massive performance improvement for any model, uh, and it's a pretty easy one to do. And the other flags, if, if you do need more flags, um, there are other ways to do more complicated flags. There are a lot of different ways to flag these records. Uh, data flows to flag things compl in a complicated way. Uh, we can use more complicated calculated fields, although if you're doing too much more complication than what we've done in this demonstration, I uh, could make the argument that it might be time to start looking at a data flow for it. But uh, that'll be enough uh, for this video. So I'll put the, um, the description of each of these formulas, calculated field formulas in the video description for this. And if you have any questions, give us a call or shoot us an email, support at precisionmining.com. Have a good one.